Hi there, David and uh, Greg. Just wanted to uh, put together a short um, video analysis of your stroke there, David. I um, I know, obviously, with such a, a long um, distance ahead of you down the Thames, which is an amazing feat of endurance that uh, you're going to be obviously needing to look after your shoulders and uh, and your back, etc. So, I um, I spoke with Greg just after the session, and um, and we felt it okay to uh, to send you through a couple of tips that will hopefully help you over the next few days. This is the sort of area that I specialise in over in uh, over in Perth. So I'm hoping these uh, tips are going to help you and. And uh, just give you something simple to focus on. One of the nice things that um, I uh, heard, overheard you saying earlier on today was that you feel like you just like to focus on your rhythm and just get into a little bit of a zone. So rather than overcomplicating things here, um, I'm just going to give you um, basically just four little areas that you might want to think about over the course of tomorrow and the next few days. You could even write these on your hands, just one um, uh, one word for each um, each little point, and uh, maybe just break them down per section. You know, so you could work on the first two hours, for example, on what we're going to go through first, which is your your hand entry into the water. Um, second point being uh, a bit of work on body rotation. Third point on the catch, and then the fourth point, very finally, just on the rhythm um, of the stroke, which will actually relate to point number one. Like I say, these are all designed to be very, very simple, just something you can loosely keep in your mind, but all with a um, total focus on making sure you get over to uh, or get down to London um, with your shoulders still intact. Um, it's not about trying to reform or change your stroke radically, but just give you a couple of pointers to uh, to make things feel a bit better. So thanks ever so much for giving me the opportunity to swim with you guys today. It was absolutely fantastic, and. Uh, here we go, let's have a little, little look at your stroke then. So, let's um, bring up this video clip first. Okay, now we just need to skip along to just around about here. Now, this is just a little bit of video footage obviously taken from the um, from the documentary, um, and I'll bring up some footage from, from today. So I just wanted to go through a couple of things. Um, one of the nice things here, this is you underneath the water uh, when you're doing your Croatian, um, Croatian swim. One of the big things which I find a lot of people uh, miss out on when they're... Um, uh, when they're swimming properly is uh, is good exhalation underneath the water. I think from your video footage that your exhalation is really very very good David. Um, it shows that you're exhaling consistently underneath the water from your nose there. It's one of the reasons you look so relaxed in the water which is fantastic. Now let's just zoom out and uh, come back to the start of this video clip. Now this was the uh, the start where you and Greg were in the uh, lake to start off with and this is really just wants to bring you um, Bring on to the very, very first point, which is, if we just zoom in here, your hand entry into the water. Now, you tend to do this on both sides. Uh, we can see here when Greg comes over the top of the water, he actually enters into the water fingertip first which is great, helps to keep his shoulder in a nice neutral position and helps to stave off any worries with his shoulders etc. With yourself here we can see that you actually internally rotate your shoulder. So what I mean by that is the thumb actually comes first into the water and this is how many people in the UK are originally taught to swim but it's um, been shown to be one of the leading causes of shoulder pain and impingement. So in terms of getting down to London we want to watch out for that. So this uh, right hand comes into the water thumb first and we'll also see in a moment that it tends to cross over in front of your head. We'll see on the left hand side as well a similar sort of scenario coming around and then eventually spearing into the water a little bit better on that left hand side. But this is something that we really need to watch out for there, this thumb first entry in, in front of your head. So probably one of the easiest ways I reckon of thinking about this whilst you're swimming tomorrow is to simply think about your fingertips trying to spear a little fish, fish out in front of you. I know it sounds a little bit silly but um, it's one of the easiest ways to just make sure that your fingertips are going first into the water as opposed to your thumb first. Watching you when I uh, was swimming side by side with you today, you tend to do this much more with your left hand um, now. Obviously this video footage that we're watching here is from five years ago. You tend to do this much more with your left hand, um, whereas the right hand side tends to come into the water a little bit with the uh, with the brakes on. I'll show you a little bit more what I mean by that in just a second. So a little bit more footage here, just from the side. Again, we can just sort of see here. Look, this time now, the left hand coming into the water, thumb first into the water there. Compare that with Greg's hand entry. Much more fingertip first into the water. So it just helps, like I say, to keep his shoulder in a nice neutral position. Generally speaking, you have you do have a very, very nice stroke. I was very impressed with uh, how well you're breathing out to the side as well, uh, not lifting your head too high, which helps keep your body position nice and uh, in a good profile in the water. 
and breathing out to the side there like Popeye with chewy spinach which is uh, one of the things that we're actually looking for not too much of a head, high head lift but really this thumb first entry into the water, hand entry into the water here could be one of the reasons why you're actually just starting to feel a little bit sore in your um, in your shoulders and also the upper back as well there okay now this is a nice little clip here from the also from the documentary from above now if we just watch this here we can see that when your hands go into the water they actually cross over in front of your head there quite substantially in fact so if we just draw this on that left hand sorry that right hand cutting well across in front of the center line in an ideal world that right hand should actually be extending straight forward in front of you so this is really still on that same topic of hand entry into the water and something you can simply think about maybe when you're just doing that first two hours tomorrow. So it should be fingertips first and it, that middle finger of that right hand should be extending straight forward in front of the same shoulder. As you do this the body actually tends to rotate as you do that and it helps to actually free up and alleviate a bit of stress on your shoulder. The problem with the crossover as we can see here is that the legs actually start to scissor kick apart. Again, compare that with Greg's legs here, staying much closer together, meaning therefore that he actually has a lot less drag going through the water. It's one of the reasons why he feels like he can maintain a good speed and rhythm with his stroke there. Now, if we just bring up a little comparison here, one of the guys that I work with over in, um, over in Perth, um, is a guy called John O. Van Hazel. Just the name, just the name sounds like a, like he would be a fast swimmer. So let's just have a um, little look at his stroke here. We've got an animated swimmer which we uh, designed last year uh, called Mr. Smooth and he was actually modelled off um, this guy that you're about to watch. So this really just helps to visualise that fingertip first entry into the water and more importantly that middle finger extending straight forward in front of the same shoulder. So you can see that every time Jono's hand enters into the water that middle finger extends straight forward in front of that shoulder there and looking at it from above like this, it's just either side of that imaginary centre line extending forward from the middle of his head. Very, very rhythmical indeed. Now I'll notice from the side, Jono here has got this sort of classic high elbow recovery over the top of the water. He's got very, very flexible shoulders. And he also rotates his body through the water, almost like he's twizzling along a kebab stick. It helps to keep his shoulders nice and relaxed, and you'll notice that Greg tends to do that quite well within his stroke there. When you're wearing a wetsuit, though, um, one of the things that I've noticed with your stroke is that you do look a lot more comfortable without the wetsuit on. Uh, the wetsuit obviously adds a little bit of friction and resistance around the shoulders, so we need to just be sort of um, careful of that, otherwise you tend to feel like your arms are almost dragging through the, uh, through the water. So I'll just show you how we might want to improve that in a moment. But John Van Hazel there, a nice example of how that hand entry should go easily and smoothly into the water. There we go, fingertips first entering, entering into the water, not thumb first. Nice and smooth. Okay, now let's just get rid of uh, that and come back up here. So I've just had a little look at that alignment. Now let's just have a little look at this um, this little video clip underneath the water. So you're training in the uh, in the pool here. So we can see also this left hand tends to cross over in front of the head. So when it crosses over, you can almost see this crease in the shoulder here. It just tends to uh, create a bit too much tension in the uh, in the shoulder there. And uh, you know when you're swimming for eight to ten hours a day, that can really uh, really cause problems. Same here on this right hand side, thumb first entry into the water and just cutting across in front of your head. Now let's take a look, little look underneath the water, some nice video footage just here. Here we go, okay. I can't imagine how tired you're going to be feeling each night after your um, after these long swims. But here we are. Let's have a little look underneath underneath the water here. Here we go. 
Okay, so underneath the water, again, we can see that uh, left hand just spearing thumb first into the water. What this unfortunately means is that your hand ends up sort of slicing through the water. We don't get a good firm grip on the water um, until we start to press back around about now. In a second, I'm going to show you a nice bit of video footage of um, double Olympic gold medalist Rebecca Adlington, uh, who we managed to film a little bit earlier on in the year, and uh, we'll show you exactly how she catches and pulls through. Now let's come to that point just here. Okay, so when you're pulling through with these arms, you can see here how straight that arm is as you're pulling through. In fact, if we want to get technical, let's put on a, uh, a number there. So 168 degrees at your at your elbow. Now you're not going to be carrying a uh, a protractor around with you, but if we just do literally a side-by-side -side comparison with um, Becky Adlington, let's bring her up here. Let's have a little look at what she looks like underneath the water. So when she pulls through here, she's absolutely world-renowned for a brilliant catch and pull through underneath the water. You can see that she maintains this high, what we call this high elbow catch and pull through. And quite a difference in the bend at the elbow there. So what it means for Rebecca is that she actually ends up pressing through or pressing water back behind her which sends her forward as opposed to pressing down with that more of a straight arm. What it also means for Rebecca is that when she does pull through the majority of the work that she's doing is going on the chest and upper back as opposed to that more of a straighter arm pull through which really tends to load up the shoulders. And again over a longer distance, um, distance swim we've got to watch out for how much that, um, that affects the shoulders there. We'll see Rebecca from the side here. Let's just get rid of that um, Let's take that there. So you see fingertips just tipping down, bending this elbow. You may have heard uh, Greg or other coaches talking about this idea of reaching over a barrel. That's exactly what Rebecca's doing here. So she just gets into this idea of pressing water back behind her, keeping that elbow bent and high underneath the water there. One of the easiest ways I've found of uh, just thinking about this when I swim, swim is to imagine almost pulling yourself along a rope underneath the body. Um, this will encourage you to bend your elbows and uh, press that water back behind you as opposed to pulling through with that straight arm. Again, remember that's going to take some load off your shoulders and, uh, and help with that quite nicely. Okay. So from this angle here, you can sort of see that crossover happening in front of the head there, sweeping across in front of the head. It leads to the body sort of bending through the core there, which again causes legs to sort of scissor kick apart and creates a little bit of drag for you. So have a little go tomorrow, just sort of visualizing maybe in the second, second couple of hours, just thinking about pulling yourself along a rope underneath the body, trying to imagine those elbows bending and pressing water back behind you as opposed to pulling through with quite a straight arm. It's a little bit harder to do that in a wetsuit because obviously it's a little bit more restricted around your elbow as well as the shoulders but uh, it should give you um, give you quite a bit of, a, bit of a helping hand there. Okay that was about it from the, um, the original footage there. Now let's just have a little look at this body rotation, low arm swing. Now this is one of the reasons why um, I feel like you're getting some um, upper back and also lower back soreness as well. So let's just have a, a quick look at uh, some of the video footage that we managed to get um, earlier on today. So. Let's zoom in here a little bit. So quite a nice example actually. Um, that's myself, this is Greg over here. See almost like the synchronized high elbow uh, recovery over the top of the water and then fingertip first entry into the water on both sides here. Now this, you see your arm recovery here, this left arm tends to swing around very very flat over the surface of the water and because of the shoulder being very very um, uh, restricted by the sh by the wetsuit, we've got to be careful for that because that is going to be loading up the shoulders and uh, and causing a bit of premature fatigue there. This right hand tends to sometimes um, almost push into the water as opposed to spearing in, 
So you can maybe almost take the um, take the visualization of how Greg's hands enter into the water there, almost like he's spearing a fish out in front of him. Now, what's quite interesting is if we just zoom out of this, your arm recovery, funnily enough, looked really, really good when you were waving at the crowds. So let me just show you what I mean by this. So, just coming along here. So that's a, just a standard sort of recovery. And you can see obviously that left hand coming into the water thumb first. Now, when you come up to uh, to wave to the crowds, so a couple of low arm swings. Okay, here we go. Now, we're actually waving to the crowd there, obviously. And it might, whilst that might not look like a standard um, arm recovery over the top of the water, if you imagine almost bringing your arm up like you are about to wave, but then at this point, then bend the elbow and spear into the water so that this arm doesn't actually enter into the water flat, you'd be pretty much halfway there to, uh, to getting the arms up over the top of the water consistently. Again, when these left arms start to swing around the side, we're really working against the wetsuit material there. So whilst many um, elite pool swimmers will swim with a sort of that classic high elbow recovery, many of the world's best open water swimmers tend to swim with a little bit more of a straighter arm recovery. It might not look as pretty, but if I just show you um, a video clip of a, uh, a guy I used to work with in the UK, a guy called Harry Wiltshire, he's very, very extreme here in his arm recovery over the top of the water. But again, just you could almost just sort of imagine your shoulders being loose enough for the arm recovery to come up and over a little bit straighter just to give you a little bit more arm clearance and then remembering to finish it off properly by spearing into the water there at the front end of the stroke. Now you notice that Harry is actually quite lopsided, that's because he's only breathing to the one side. Um, I was very impressed with the regularity of your bilateral breathing there, which is again going to help you um, save, off, save those shoulders and uh, make things feel a lot better longer term. Okay. So remember this body rotation here, point number two, uh, this low arm swing, if you get yourself uh, rotating around the central axis of your spine a little bit better, as you're entering into the water. Let's just have a little look at Mr. Smooth. You'll see him doing that. He comes up. Okay, so we wanted to build this um, application just to sort of show, demonstrate that rotation. I think he looks a little bit like Greg. <laughs> So if we just get rid of that water there, you can see as he reaches forward, that middle finger extends straight forward in front of the shoulder and rotates those hips and shoulders through the water there. Just change the angle to look at him from the front. You can see it almost looks like he's pulling along a rope underneath the body, very, very similar to how Rebecca Adlington was swimming there. So you don't need the world's most flexible shoulders to get a good recovery over the top of the water, but we do need some of this rotation, around about 45 to 60 degrees. Now again, you're not going to be carrying a protractor, but maybe you can just sort of thinking about reaching with that middle finger straight forward in front of the shoulder a little bit, and that should help to open up your shoulders and uh, your hips as well as you swim. Now obviously the third point there, the catch, we've already mentioned that, sort of pressing down with that straight arm underneath the water, um, which will put all the load on your, uh, on your shoulders. Now this final one here, rhythm, um, the stroke rate, as affected by point number one. Now let me just see if we can just finish off with this final video clip of this um, hand entry into the water. So let's just um, zoom in here and zoom in on yourself. So there we go, thumb first on that left hand side. On this right hand side though, every now and again the hand comes into the water. I don't know if you can see it here. It's almost like the elbow drops in first, and then the wrist, and then finally the fingertips. So it's almost like you're slapping the water a little bit on that uh, on that right hand side. 
Now this is uh, this is inevitable. Whenever you get tired, etc., which you're bound to do swimming 20, 20 plus miles per day, um, we just got to be careful for that because unfortunately, when we slap into the water like this and create this bit of a splash here, um, it's actually going to be obviously slowing you down. It's like applying the brakes at the front end of the stroke, but that'll also kill the rhythm of your stroke a little bit as well. It'll actually slow your stroke rate down. And um, just watching you over the course of the day uh, today, your stroke rate sort of varied from um, at the low point around about 50 to 52 strokes per minute. Um, but when you were flying along, that nice section that we had uh, shortly after I joined you in the water, you're clipping along there around about 57 strokes per minute, and that's when you look at your absolute best. Now, you know, again, you don't need to know those numbers, but just by avoiding that right hand slapping into the water and just thinking about it spearing nice and cleanly into the water there that'll help to maintain that rhythm of the stroke and uh, like you rightly said earlier on or over lunch the rhythm is absolutely essential if you can keep that rhythm going you'll just keep things going all day nice and smoothly okay so David, I hope this has been uh, useful for you. I hope you're enjoying your breakfast over this. Um, so just to reiterate, the four things that you could think about tomorrow, don't think about these all together at the same time, but maybe just sort of split today's uh, swim up so that you um, just work on one of these areas at a time, maybe for a period of two hours, and really see which gives you the best um, um, alleviation of some of those aches and pains that you're going to be experiencing on uh, days three and four. So the first point, remember hand entry into the water, that should be not thumb first but fingertips first into the water. It shouldn't be crossing over, that middle finger should be extending straight forward in front of the shoulder and we should be spearing into the water like we're spearing a fish as opposed to actually breaking with that right hand. Okay, second point is just really to Make sure they're getting a little bit more rotation through your upper back and shoulders as you swim with each stroke. That low arm swing just puts a little bit of pressure on the shoulders over time, especially with the wetsuit on. So a little bit more clearance is, uh, is achieved by aiming for a slightly straighter arm recovery. Now whilst it might not look textbook perfect, it will help to free up the shoulders a little bit. So think of that sort of straighter arm recovery, almost like you're about to wave to somebody, but then eventually just spearing into the water properly. The third point was the catch, so maybe after lunch tomorrow you might want to think about just avoiding pressing through with a very very straight arm. Uh, try and feel like you're Rebecca Adlington, bending your elbow and pulling yourself along a rope underneath the body. Um, and then the final thing, obviously just the uh, towards the end part of the day, just focus on making sure that rhythm of the stroke just holds it there, just keeping that nice tempo going. And uh, if you work on that first hand entry point into the water, not slapping into the water, that will help to keep that rhythm up nice and smoothly. Don't be afraid to look across at Greg, um, Greg's stroke every now and again. Obviously he's got a fantastic stroke as you know, and um, just almost trying to sort of like mirror image that uh, would uh, would be really very, very useful for you. So I hope that's uh, hope that's helped you. Um, all of those things should actually help to alleviate some, pr some pressure in your upper back and shoulders. Uh, the lower back is probably just simply um, from the fact that the hands are crossing over in front of your head and consequently the hips end up sort of snaking um, down the river there. If you can get those hands going in straight forward in front of the same shoulder, that will reduce the snaking and consequently reduce some of the aching in your lower back and also for your upper back and uh, your rhomboids there as well, as Chris was massaging earlier. Okay guys, great swimming with you, I hope this helps, best of luck for this fantastic challenge that still lies ahead of you, cheers.